G'day ladies and gentlemen, my name is Lance Clark and this is going to be what's in my professional minimalist camera setup stuff of the year, 2021. Let's just get into it. First off, the bag, Peter McKinnon Times Nomadic Backpack Camera Backpack. It is a ridiculously overpriced bag. Um, it gets the job done. You could definitely pay a lot cheaper for a bag that you do the exact same thing with. I do like the aspect that you can carry a few sets of clothes in the front pocket, um, but I find that if I'm carrying clothes or I'm going somewhere and I'm on a shoot, the backpack ends up being like this big and it's like really hard to shut. So I end up really struggling with it and then it becomes really heavy also. So it almost becomes like I'm just carrying the backpack and then I leave it in my car then I have to like run back and forth. So I don't really like that aspect, honestly. But like I said, it's a camera backpack. It's expensive. But hey, if you want that Peter McKinnon brand, you, you gotta do it. That's just what you gotta do. Looking at the inside of the backpack, we're gonna actually start with the lid bit. I have ND filters for my drone. They're just from the Tiffin company. I have a memory card pouch thingy, which has additional memory cards in it. I keep two 128 gigabyte memory cards in my camera. And so I just have a couple of backup ones if for some reason I end up filling up two 128 gigs. Extra batteries, I can't stress it enough to have never ending batteries. Just the more batteries that you have, the better. Um, and then this is a monitor hot cold shoe clip stand thing from Small Rig. Uh, I have a small HD monitor, which I'll get to in a moment. One thing that was really cool that I saw from another YouTuber, I think it was maybe Potato Jet or um, Sydney Jong Jong. I don't know how to pronounce his name. I apologize, um, but it's one of these little like. Uh, moisture packets that you get with packaging and with lots of things. I just keep this in my bag just in case there's any like, if I go somewhere super humid, it will keep my lenses and like my sensor not fogged up. And so I thought that was a really cool tip. So I keep that in my bag now, just at all times. Moving on to the fun part. This is where I keep my camera. I use the Canon. R6, I personally think that it is a fantastic hybrid camera. It gets really good video and it also has amazing photos, like beautiful photos, gotta say. Do you need the Canon R6 to be able to do this? No. If you're looking at being a videographer and you wanna go into the mirrorless DSLR kind of route, I highly suggest getting a Sony camera. They're just way better at video. If you were looking at just photography stuff, I suggest getting maybe the Canon EOS R. I had the EOS R before I got the R6. Honestly, I don't necessarily see a huge jump, um, in the difference, even though there's such a huge price difference. So, you don't need the most expensive camera. I'm gonna non-stop agree with that one. Small little case thingy, which I actually really quite enjoy. It's probably the best purchase with the like Peter McKinnon nomadic bag thing. This is where I keep a lot of my little accessory stuff. I have a square reader so I can take card payments from clients right then and there. I also keep the um, DJI Pocket 2, which is my backup camera, as well as a gimbaled little steady cam camera, which is awesome. I have my GoPro in here. And I also have my audio stuff in here as well. I use the Rode Video Go, Micro Go thing. Lav mic, you should have a lav mic. Probably one of the most important things I would say if you're capturing audio. I also have headphones just so I can check my levels and that's pretty much it in there. An additional audio thing that I use is the uh, Rode Video Go. Pro Plus thing, which is just right here out of frame. Um, it's really good for an on-camera microphone. Filter case, where I keep filters, mainly ND filters. Um, if you do video stuff, use ND filters, highly suggest it. Now, I also use the Mist filters and the Black Pro Mist. I currently have a Black Pro Mist filter on my camera right now. I just find that it adds a really unique look and it's just really cool and I really enjoy it. It just separates me from a lot of other people. It gives me more of that uh, artistic uh, uniqueness that I kind of go for. So I also have the Mist Edition and D filters, which were awesome. I really enjoy those. They are great. Light, small LED light. Kablam. I absolutely love, love LED lights. Um, 
this is the Aperture MC. Honestly, RGB, by color, not much else you can say about it. One of the biggest things that I find with this is that if you're in a room doing like a wedding or something and you have lots of ambient light, slap this on top of your camera to illuminate your subject just so that they stand out just that little bit extra. You can also splash a little bit of color, for example, like this warm color so it's not super cool or cold in the room. Adds that little bit of contrast, really enjoy it. Great for product photography stuff as well. Honestly, I did love that light. All right, going on to this little camera compartment thing. This is where I keep me drone. This is the uh, DJI Mavic Mini. Um, what else can I say? It's a very small drone. If you live in Canada or somewhere that has very strict drone laws, such as Canada, this drone is fantastic. You don't need a professional pilot license, drone license thing to fly it. And also, you can fly it in most places without getting into ridiculous amounts of trouble because it's so small. I find that if you fly like really big drones in like downtown, that's just a bad day. I also have this as just a little connector, hot shoe, cold shoe mount thingy. And I have a handle that goes on my cold shoe as well, which I use just to attach multiple accessories, such as my microphone, the light, and my monitor, all at the same time. Can never have m enough mounting options. Uh, this is the monitor I use, small HD Focus 7. It is a hot swappable monitor with batteries. Massive stupid batteries more and more batteries. I carry around is driving me bonkers um, Yeah, it's all right. I don't mind I find that it's really good for client work if I'm having a client standing by me They can watch the monitor whilst I am recording and doing things So then it eliminates the step of having to do playback to be like oh client is this good Do you like this they go? I saw it. I saw everything and you're like sweet. Thanks, and then you move on and you're good to go Okay that's pretty much it. That is like what I will take with me pretty much everywhere on a professional shoot. There are a couple of additional things that I have added that I don't necessarily take with me to every single shoot, but they will up your production quality quite a bit whilst still trying to maintain that minimalist kind of mentality. First one is a reflector. I will take this reflector to a lot of shoots. It's a five in one reflector slash diffuser. If I have to block light, for example, there's a window right there that I usually will put this up there to block the window light so that it's not so freaking bright in here, but it's fine. So I highly suggest bringing a reflector. They're very inexpensive, very small. They fold down, they're fantastic. Another thing to really up your production quality, gimbals. I personally really hate gimbals, but honestly, you need it. it you need it. You do. You do. Monopod. I will try to bring this in replace of a tripod because it is such a small form factor and it stands on its own. It's just a Benro one. It works really well. Monopod. Great for doing like things if you have to move around a lot but you're having to like do an interview kind of thing. You literally can just pick it up, walk, place, get the things, nice steady shot, move on, good to go. Okay, last two things I'm going to talk about. One, this light, Nan Light, Pavo Tube 15C. This is the two foot option for the Nan Light Pavo thingamajigs. Um, it is lovely. It is RGB, bi colored, all the things. It is big enough that you can use it as its own key light, and it's small enough that you still are maintaining that minimalist footprint. Um, I've brought this on several shoots now. I just recently got it actually. I brought it on several shoots and it works honestly quite fantastically for the size of it. It is a little bit more expensive kind of for like the size of the light, but you definitely get what you pay for. Happy, joyful, good thing. Final thing, last thing, if you really want to increase your production quality, if you really want to take better photos or better videos, I do suggest getting a professional studio styled light, something nice, big, and strong. I am currently using the Aperture 300D Mark II. That's this guy right there. It's only at 20% and it illuminates, like this is a lot, like this is fairly dark. There is a window right there, but it doesn't really add a whole bunch. This really just lights up the entire room. It's only at 20%. So I would say that it's really unnecessary to get this light specifically. Aperture just released um, a few new lights which have pretty much the same kind of similar power output as the 120D, which is a ridiculously powerful light on its own, but for like a third of the price. They're like 
400 bucks or so Canadian, which is awesome. So if you want to increase and get that production quality nice and high, I do suggest getting a studio light. I strongly use only one light for all of my shoots to try and keep that minimalist footprint as much as possible since I only take my camera bag as well as the light bag and that's it. That's all I carry with me to shoot and I can get pretty much everything done that I need to. It is great and I love it. If you enjoyed this video, please like. If you have something that you can't live without, if you're like a minimalist pro photo person and you're just like, man, this is how I've narrowed down my lights and so on and so forth. Leave a comment down below for that thing. If you want to see more of these videos, if you enjoyed this in any way, shape, or form, I would appreciate a subscribe. I think I just recently passed like 200 subscribers, which was really cool and really awesome and a milestone for me. And I feel all warm and fuzzy inside. So keep making me feel warm and fuzzy because I'm selfish that way. <laughs> I'll get you guys on the next one. Peace.